الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <coughs> Welcome brothers and sisters to another installment of our light study of selected hadith from Riyadh al-Salihin uh, Today we'll be looking at the 17th hadith that we've taken in our study and the first hadith from the chapter of As-Sidq the chapter of truthfulness and we've entitled this hadith, Honesty Leads to Paradise, While Lying Leads to Hell. And that hadith is on the authority of Abdullah ibn Mas'udin radiallahu anhu, and in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, inna sidqa yahdi, yahdi ila al-bir, wa inna al-birra yahdi ila al-nar, wa inna al-rajula la yasduqu hatta yuktab inda Allahi siddiqan. وَإِنَّ الْكَذِبَ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْفُجُورِ وَإِنَّ الْفُجُورَ يَهْدِي إِلَى النَّارِ وَإِنَّ الرَّجُلَ لَيَكْذِبُ حَتَّى يُكْتَبَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ كَذَّابًا So in this hadith, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Verily truthfulness leads to righteousness, and righteousness leads to paradise. And indeed, a person will continue to tell the truth until he is written down with Allah as impeccably honest, truthful by nature. Verily, lying leads to iniquity, and iniquity leads to hell. And a person will continue to lie and speak falsely until he is written down with Allah as a habitual liar. The hadith was collected by Bukhari and Muslim, it is agreed upon. In this hadith, brothers and sisters, the Prophet ﷺ Clarify that both honesty and dishonesty have consequences, whether we realize it or not. And they affect the person in this world and in the hereafter. He also contrasted between the effects of these two characters so that we can make an informed decision regarding which one we want to possess. We can't be lying and say, we didn't know that lying could bear these consequences in thereafter. If we knew this, we wouldn't have lied in the world. No, the Prophet ﷺ is giving us a heads up. Letting us know that honesty has consequences. Lying has consequences. And so you, O believer, make an informed decision. Knowing what the consequences are, which of these characters do you want to possess? He said, verily truthfulness leads to righteousness, and righteousness leads to paradise. And indeed, a person will continue to tell the truth until he is written down with Allah as impeccably honest, truthful by nature. So it's as if the Prophet is saying, honesty, O Muslim, is like a seed from which the tree of goodness sprouts, grows tall, and bears fruit. It grows tall, strong, and ultimately bears fruit. It bears good fruit. Honesty is like a seed that when it's planted in the heart, it sprouts. It grows a tree of goodness which bears good fruit. And what that means, brothers, or what the Prophet is telling us, brothers and sisters, in a roundabout way, is that if we make it a point to develop and foster and nurture this character within ourselves, the character of honesty and truthfulness, then that will enable us to, without doing a lot of work, develop other good, desirable characters. Like patience, like courage, like modesty, like generosity. You name the good quality. It will come as a consequence. It will come as a result of us being honest and truthful. As the Prophet said, in the sidqa, Yahdi ila al-bir. Indeed, honesty, truthfulness leads to what? Leads to goodness. It's a seed that's going to give us a tree in our heart that gives birth to what? Or produces the fruit of what? Of other good character. He also goes on and tells us that the reward for truthfulness and the other good deeds it produces is paradise itself. That by being honest, and then developing these other characteristics which come as a result of our honesty, we're going to earn paradise. 
And this should be ample enough incentive for us to be truthful. Just knowing that we're going to be good people who are going to earn paradise, that's enough incentive for us to be truthful. But beyond that, when a person makes it a point to always tell the truth, what else happens? It becomes part of his nature. He develops an affinity for truth. He he becomes a lover of truth and actively seeks the truth in all matters. And people will deem him honest and Allah will label him as such. He will be given this moniker, this stamp, this reputation of being honest and truthful. When people speak about him, they'll say so-and-so. He always tells the truth. He's an honest person. He can be trusted. The prophet goes on, he says, he gives us the other side of the coin. He says, verily lying leads to iniquity. And iniquity leads to hell and a person will continue to lie and speak falsely until he is written down with the law as a habitual liar. So on the other hand, lying gives birth to weakness. We talk wickedness. We talked about how truth gives birth to what? It's, it's a seed which sprouts this tree of goodness, which bears good fruit. But on the other hand, lying gives birth to wickedness and evil deeds which poison the tree of goodness. Makes it difficult for us to do good deeds and cause an evil tree to grow in its place. That evil tree will bear vile fruit, wicked deeds that will earn us Allah's anger and punishment in the hellfire. This alone should be ample incentive for us to avoid lying. Should make us just that knowledge that if we become given to lying, if we get in the habit of telling untruths or half-truths, then what will happen? That will give birth to other wicked deeds. Without us realizing, we'll start doing other things which are wicked and e- evil and developing evil characteristics which will earn us Allah's anger and punishment in the hereafter. Well, yeah, this should be enough, ample, 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 more than enough incentive for us to avoid lying. But beyond that, as we mentioned yesterday, One lie invariably leads to another lie. And that, because why? When you lie once, you want to do what? Lie again to conceal the falsity of the first lie. Then that second lie leads to another lie. Then another and another and another. Until what? Until the liar is caught in a web of lies. A web of deceit or buried by his lies in a deep pit and therefore unable to escape. Or... He climbs to the top of this tower of lies, trying to escape the consequences of his lies and his evil deeds. So every time he does evil, he has to lie about it, and lie and lie and lie until he climbs to the top of what? Of a tower of lies to escape the consequences of his evil deeds. But when this tower of lies comes crashing down, the truth gets revealed. And that tower of lies comes crashing down. His reputation is ruined. And he is viewed as untrustworthy by everyone with whom he interacts. As the Prophet said, Yuktab and Allahi Kathab. And he'll be written down with Allah as a liar. And when people see him and interact with him and speak about him, they will speak about him in very negative terms. They'll say, Oh, you can't trust him. He's a liar. He always lies. All he does is tell the tell tell falsehood. All he does is tell untruths. And you can't believe anything he says. If that joker says it's raining outside, you have to go to the window and check. If he says the sky is blue, you have to go and and look up and see, is it really blue? Even though you know it's blue because he said it, you don't believe it. Yes, subhanAllah. So this is, in addition to the punishment of the hereafter, this is the consequence of lying in this world. Lessons. What lessons can we take away from what we heard today, brothers and sisters? First of all, number one, honesty only begets goodness. We can never go wrong by telling the truth. Don't listen to the devil who tells you that telling, oh, you shouldn't tell the truth. Oh, it would be bad if you tell the truth. Oh, it would be a bad thing. Don't tell the truth. You have to lie. You have no choice but to lie. No, nothing. As we used to, when we were growing up, we used to be told the truth will set you free. And it's, to, it's so true. Nobody can blackmail you. Nobody can hold anything over your head if you're always honest. You're always truthful. Nothing but goodness can come from truthness, as the Prophet said, in the sidq yahdi il al-bir. Indeed, honesty leads to righteousness. It leads to goodness. Number two from the lessons. That doesn't negate the fact that only goodness can come from being truthful does not negate the fact 
that sometimes, underscore the word sometimes, it shouldn't be the regular, the, the, it shouldn't be the, the rule, it should be the exception. Sometimes we have to use wisdom in how we tell the truth. And we have examples of, of this from the Sunnah. And from the life of the lives of the Prophets, alayhim, alayhim So for example, the Prophet, alayhim, when he made Al-Hijrah, and he was fleeing for his life, if he were caught and captured, he would have been killed. So he would be encountered at times by different people on his journey, and they were aware that there was a bounty and people were looking for him. So they would ask, these people would ask when they would accompany, they would, they would, they would come across him and his companion Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu, they would ask, you know, where are you from? And if the Prophet had said, we are from Mecca, we are from Quraysh, then that would have exposed them. But at the same time, the Prophet is not a liar. He never would lie. And he's the, the role model for the believers. He can't lie because that would set a precedent for us to lie as well. So what would the Prophet do? He would use wisdom. He would tell the truth, but use wisdom in telling the truth. So he would say to the people, نَحْنُ min مَا We are from water. And they would think that he was from what? From Jeddah. He was from the, um, the western uh, seaboard of Arabia. نَحْنُ min مَا we, We're the people from the water. We, we, live, on the coast of, we live on the coast. Right? They, that's what they would think. But what the Prophet intended by saying that was that we are from water, meaning the fluid that comes from a man and woman that leads to what? To childbirth. And all human beings are for, in that sense, are from what? From Matt. And so the Prophet didn't lie, but he used wisdom in telling the truth. Another example would be Ibrahim, alayhi salam. When he went with his wife, Sarah, to Egypt, and the leader of Egypt, the tyrannical leader of Egypt, he coveted her. Coveted the wife of Ibrahim. In order for him, Ibrahim and Sarah to avoid from Sarah being what taken, seized by the king, then they had to convince him that they weren't married. Because the way that the law was, he couldn't take an unmarried woman from what? From her relative. But he could take a married woman from her husband. So Ibrahim, he told, he told the, 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 uh, the tyrannical ruler at that time, and he told Sarah, he told the tyrannical ruler, She's my sister. And he told Sarah, when he asks you, tell him I am your brother. And that wasn't, that wasn't a lie. That was a wise way of telling the truth, meaning what? She is my sister in Deen. And that was true. So sometimes we may, we may have to use wisdom in telling the truth, but even then, using that wisdom should be, or, or speaking in this way, should be the exception, not the rule. Sometimes there may be situations that call for this type of presentation of the truth, wise dissemination of the truth, but we, that shouldn't be the asl, that should be the fault. That should not be the rule, it should be the exception. Number three from the lessons, the Prophet said al-kathib, al-kathib. This al, at the beginning of the word kathib, indicates inclusion of all categories and forms. This means that lying in all of its forms is sinful and leads to iniquity. So that the Prophet saying every type of kedib, without exception, is what? Is yahdi uh, al-fujur, will lead to iniquity. Number three from the lessons, what that teaches us as an extension, okay, uh, which leads us to the third, the third, uh, the previous lesson leads us to the third lesson, which, mean, which is, there's no such thing in Islam as a white lie. We don't have that in Islam. We don't have a good lie. A white lie. We don't have that in Islam, generally speaking. There may be some exceptions, and we'll talk about those exceptions, inshallah ta'ala, as we get into the chapter. But the general rule is that when a person tells something other than the truth or tells a lie, then what? That is wrong. And we can't think that we can make a lie, a good lie, simply because of what? Our intention by lying. I have a good intention by lying. Or I have something to gain by lying. And so therefore, it's a white lie. Or it's a white lie because no one was hurt by it. No, the usul in our religion, the original rule, the basic rule of thumb in our religion is that lying, without exception, in all of its forms and categories, all of the, its manifestations, is what? Is wrong, is wicked, is a type of iniquity, and will lead to what? To the hellfire. Number five from the lessons, I said three but from the previous one, but it's actually number, number four. Number five from the lessons, is Muslims are expected to tell the truth and to actively seek the truth in all matters, right? In one of the verses of the Hadith, the Prophet said, 
وإن الرجل لا يستق ويتحرى الصدق right ولا يتز ولا يزال يتحرى الصدق that a man will tell the truth and he will not cease to what to actively seek the truth the prophet said one version of the same hadith and so the believer beyond being honest himself he develops this affinity for the truth he loves the truth and he actively seeks it out in all matters especially in matters of religion so when we have these differences of opinion where people are saying this is what it is no that's what it is this is halal this is haram no no no, no it's haram no it's halal they're differing about this or they're differing about what is sunnah what is from the deen and what is bid'ah what is not from the deen a heresy or an innovation when we have these differences the believers are the ones who actively seek what seek the truth as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fa in tanaza'tum fi shay'in فردوه الله ورسوله إن كنتم تؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر ذلك خير ذلك خير وأحسن تأويلا. He says and if you differ in any matter then refer it back to Allah and His Messenger. Actively seek the right understanding and the correct opinion by studying the Quran and Hadith if you truly believe in Allah and the Last Day, right? And so the Muslim, some people they'll criticize us and they'll call us by names like the authenticity police. Oh, you people, the authenticity police. No, we're the people who actively seek the truth in all matters as the Prophet told us that we should. And he called that a good quality, not a bad quality. Not a pejorative, not something for which a person should be criticized. For actively seeking the truth in all matters. A person will tell the truth and will not seek, he will not, I'm sorry, he will not cease actively seeking the truth in all matters. And so when people push back, and this is important, brothers and sisters, because you, as a religious person trying to do the right thing, some people will tell you, come on, man, you're tripping, man. Why are you, why are you making a big deal out of these things? You know, these are all opinions from the scholars. So if a person takes this opinion, it, it's, it's, if he believes it's right, that's fine. If he believes it's right, no. The fact that you believe something is right doesn't make it right. We are supposed to look for the right thing by Allah. The right thing according to his revelation not just do whatever is out there or accept or follow one of the opinions that are out there. No, we're supposed to follow the truth when at the harra a sitq and actively seek the truth. And so it's not a shame, it's a badge of honor to be a, a truthful person who actively seeks the truth. Last but not least from the lessons number six is that we have to understand, brothers and sisters, that character traits have consequences in this world and the hereafter. Good character has good consequences in this world and in the hereafter. And bad character has bad consequences in this world and in the hereafter. So what does that mean? What is the Prophet telling us in a roundabout way that we shouldn't belittle the importance of good character? Or think that having bad character, lying every now and again, lying to get over, lying to get something that we really aren't entitled to, it's okay to do this because why? Because I'm very observant and committed to my religious deeds, my rituals. I pray on time. I pray all the five. I pray the sunan prayers and the wafal. I pray at night sometimes. I fast Mondays and Thursdays, and I always fast Ramadan without fail. Because I'm so committed to my rituals, I have such a good relationship with Allah, I can what? I can have bad character in my interactions with people and it's going to be okay. No. That it's not about just the rituals alone. A big part of being Muslim and being a worshiper of Allah is having good character. And the Prophet is teaching us, is teaching us this through this hadith. That lying, even if your lies don't hurt anybody necessarily, or if your lies hurt the people, but they don't necessarily, as in your mind, hurt your relationship with Allah. That that lying leads to iniquity, and that iniquity can lead to what? To hellfire. There are consequences for you telling a lie and having bad character. And this reminds me of the hadith, just to show and just to, uh, to, to clearly highlight the effect, the correlation between bad character and being punished in the hellfire, even if we have uh, what we think is a good relationship with Allah or we're committed to our rituals. I'm reminded of the hadith. But the Prophet ﷺ was asked by some of his companions, We know of a woman. She prays at night, prays the night prayer. And she fasts by day. 
وَتُؤْذِي جَارَهَا But she mistreats her neighbor. She abuses them, she speaks ill of them, she mistreats them, etc. What's her status, O Rasulullah? The Prophet said, هِيَ فِي النَّارِ She's in the fire. Great relationship with Allah, terrible relationship with the people. Great rituals, bad character, هِيَ فِي النَّارِ She's in the hellfire. So we have to, have to, have to take away from this hadith that character traits have consequences in this world and in the hereafter, and we need to be mindful, we need to clean up that part of our religion. Work on having good character, and it all starts with this honesty. Because the Prophet said, if you plant the seed of honesty, a tree is going to grow that's going to produce what the other characters that you covet. Bravery, courage, patience, perseverance, endurance, piety, all those things will come as a result of you just starting to be what? To be honest and committed to honesty. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the sadiqeen, the truthful ones, the people who are committed to honesty, we have the harun, and those who actively seek the truth. And with this we bring today's session to a close. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless your houses, to bless your spouses, to bless your wives and your children, to bless you and to make you blessed wherever you may be. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who listen to the talk and follow the best of it. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who he teaches beneficial knowledge and from those who he blesses to implement that beneficial knowledge and to put it into practice. Hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barakatuh Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.